Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. As I'm sure you've already seen in the thumbnail, today I'm going to be covering one of the famous questions straight out of the Judge Vault. I'm going to be talking about the interaction between Blood Moon and Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Thanks to viewer Chris Fellows for suggesting this question. Now, you'll notice that when I introduced it, I didn't say which player controlled which of these permanents, and that was intentional. The reason is because it doesn't matter. Unlike replacement effects or triggered abilities, the order that continuous effects apply in does not generally change based on which player controls the affected permanence or whose turn it is. Rather, we go based on layers. In other words, continuous effects are sorted into different layers based on what type of thing they do, and continuous effects of one sort always apply before continuous effects that do a different sort of thing. Now, unfortunately, knowing that doesn't really help us in this situation, because both of Blood Moon and Urborg change the types of land cards, and that means they both apply in layer 4, which is the type, subtype, and supertype changing layer. Now, ordinarily, when dealing with continuous effects in the same layer, the tiebreaker is something called timestamps, in other words, which continuous effect started to apply first. However, there's an exception to this. People who are already familiar with this ruling probably already know what I'm talking about. That's right, dependencies. Now, if you haven't seen my video on control magic plus steel enchantment, I'll go through the basic idea here briefly. In essence, if one continuous effect can change what a second continuous effect does, or which permanence the second effect applies to, or whether the second effect exists, then we say that that second continuous effect is dependent on the first one and it waits until after the first one has applied to do its thing. Now, if you've played with Blood Moon before, you probably know that it definitely does take away the abilities of Urborg and all the other non-basic lands it applies to. What that means is that Urborg's continuous effect depends on Blood Moon's and will wait until after Blood Moon applies to apply itself. So let's take a look at how that would work. First, Blood Moon is going to turn all non-basic lands, including Urborg, into mountains. Then, when Urborg gets its turn to apply, it won't be able to, because it won't have any abilities anymore. That's kind of sad. Now again, this is true no matter what order those two permanents entered the battlefield. Blood Moon will always apply first, because Urborg's effect is dependent upon it. One final note before I head off. This is kind of an advanced trick, but you might have noticed and wondered, why is it that Blood Moon can take away Urborg's abilities when continuous effects that add or remove abilities don't normally apply until layer 6? That's a great question, and the answer is because of this rule here. What it says is that whenever a land is gaining a basic land type, such as Mountain, it will lose all of its abilities, and it will gain the appropriate tap add mana to your mana pool ability for that land. Now the important thing to notice here is that this is a rule in the CR that's causing this change, not a continuous effect which means that it doesn't apply during the normal layer system, it just happens as a consequence of the type changing. That's why Blood Moon can indeed take away Urborg's abilities during layer 4, even though ability adding and removing doesn't typically happen until layer 6. There's also one other interesting thing to point out here, and that's that land changing effects that include the phrase, it's still a blank, or in addition to its other types, don't have this rule apply to them. That's the reason why Blood Moon takes away all the abilities from the lands it applies to, whereas Urborg, which does something extremely similar, does not. I really wish that Wizards would change this rule, or take it away, and replace the templating with something that made a little bit more sense. Something like, say, Imprisoned in the Moon has, where it specifically says that the affected permanent loses all of its other types and abilities. I think that if they changed the rules like this, it would make things a lot less confusing. And speaking of confusing, now that I showed you that card, I'm sure that lots of you out there are already thinking, hmm, I wonder how that would work with Blood Moon or Urborg or maybe both of them. Unfortunately, I'm out of time for today, so that's going to have to wait until another daily ruling. Until then, I hope you have a great day.